Hello guys, this is Erkin from HDD Recovery Services. Today, I'm gonna make another video on uh, some memory cards and recovering data from those memory cards. After uh, talking to this specific client on the phone, um, I proposed this little procedure that we're gonna attempt to do today. And uh, this is gonna be very similar to the video called uh, saving the wedding I'm gonna link it below for those who are interested for the longest time um, I was under impression that uh, um, the controller is designed to work in a certain way uh, with the memory uh, component and the memory component has nothing other than data on it but as it turns out uh, NAND actually keeps the um, arrangement of how uh, everything is laid out when it comes down to the structure on itself. So if we have a controller that is compatible uh, by spec, as long as the memory is being ran by the same controller and it is compatible with that PCB layout, uh, it turns out to be a success. Now, I mean, you have to kind of know how to pick your donors and stuff like that. Uh, and there's not much I can really tell you about this. You kind of have to just, you know, get as close as you can. Uh, but uh, how much closer can you get uh, when a client buys two cars at the same time? You can't really get much closer than that. So. Uh, most of the time, if I don't forget, I always ask uh, clients if this is the only card that they purchased or maybe there is another one. And the reason is not that I'm lazy. Uh, the reason is not that it's quicker. The reason that for um, me asking that question is because this is a better way to recover data than any type of chip off recovery that exists. Whether it uh, doesn't matter who is the manufacturer of the tool, this technique, as long as you can get it going, uh, as long as it's compatible, is going to work way better than um, any alternative that you can find with the tool for data extraction. So step one is to crack them open. I got this one labeled as the one that needs repair. I got this one without the label. I assume it's a working unit and uh, we're going to use that as a host. The only problem with a memory card uh, that is like this is uh, uh, flexibility of the board. The boards are really, really, really flimsy on them. If you use any kind of jig to like to lock the PCB in place, just because because it's really, really flimsy, any type of tension on the on the board will damage the board. Um, okay, so I usually start with the corner and work uh, the way around it, just like cut it through slightly. That's enough. Don't go deep and separate. Separate it. Also, don't flex the card. Try not to flex it at all, actually. As I said, they're really um, thin PCBs, and um, bending it will make it, will immobilize it pretty much right away. So I'm going to try to save the interface, not break it like massively apart so that we can just slide it into the reader as opposed to wiring it up to a reader that's, uh, stri that's been stripped down. Okay, I think that should be good enough. Get rid of this excess here, some glue or something. Pick that out. Like right there, that's already ripping the pad. Okay. I'm not worried about that specific pad because that's just uh, structural. 
and C pad not connected but I should have definitely been doing a better job with removing it Alright, so we call this a success more or less. The only thing I want to confirm is that whether or not the card still works at this point. We get rid of all the extra stuff that's overlapping. We're going to be sliding it back into this housing after. get rid of everything that might be in the way just gonna do a quick control uh, fit in, fitting and um, see if I can get the card to mount again slides in the reader and it mounts okay good So even though those um, NC pads had uh, seen better days, we still have very much functional part. So this is the controller on the back. Here's my own card, actually, that I had the uh, displeasure to lose that on. It actually may be... I'll try it with my card later in case in case they do end up being compatible as well. The speed though um, of this makes me think that they may not be compatible because it would have to work slightly differently to have uh, that difference in speed. This is 150 megs and my card was twice as fast. So I'm thinking controller on mine might be like SM2246 instead. Um, this is the one that we need to recover. That went much better actually. Smooth cut. So this one actually came apart very nicely and uh, no lift off even on the uh, NC pads but what I was told is that the card maybe got bumped into See how thin this PCB is. Yeah, that NC pad is definitely off of it now. The reason what we're gonna do today is taking place right now is because uh, look at this. I think it's the first time I see chips match full markings. And set it up on a preheater set it to like about 50 let it warm up 
once it gets to that temperature, because the preheater is a bit slow, um, I'll uh, get back. Over here, um, I see that this one pad that's uh, missing two and three. That could be the reason why um, the unit isn't functioning. But now I'm gonna just mark it also that this is chip number one and this is two. Ryan Little. <laughs> That's um, good. I'm gonna lower it back down to uh, 100, let it cool off, and then fire it up through the uh, original housing. Yeah, so this is the message I was getting before. And voila, 58 gigs, full structure. Not sure what, why it's showing up like this, but let's go explore one file. So the more and more I find myself using that technique lately because uh, it just works so well with video and luckily this client had the second card so my biggest suggestion to all of you guys who do professional photography always buy two cards same place same time so you can save yourself from uh, potential headache if uh, you do run into the situation. 
Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, as always, put them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and share it with your friends if you want to, especially if you shoot weddings. <laughs>